Okay, guys, welcome to another episode of the Concord Health Podcast. Um, I'm super excited about today's podcast. I've got a really, really interesting guy in the name of Paul Burgess on, and we're going to learn a load about health and how to get healthy properly and, um, you know, looking at ways not to chase symptoms and go to doctors and actually looking to, towards solutions towards your health. Now, um, I've known Paul for a long time. I don't know how long, probably over 10 years, I think now, Paul. Um, it seems that, even if it isn't. It yeah. feels like it's been 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Anyone that's known me for too long is, uh, is going to struggle for sure. But they, um, one, one interesting thing is that you've mentored me a lot over the last however many years it's been, but I've also seen you grow massively as a practitioner and you've always been massively into the health space. But what you're doing now, not compared to what you were doing before, but what you're doing now is it could add value to every single person on this planet without a shadow of a doubt. And it's absolutely fascinating. And this stuff needs to be out there, um, which is why I wanted you on today. Um, so, you know, so badly. And it's, I'm, I'm not feeling a hundred percent. I'm still a bit croaky, but the show must go on. I might mute myself out a few times. Um, so I think you've recently rebranded, right, Paul, you were athletic nutrition. Now is it your functional nutrition? Is that right? Yeah. So, so firstly, Thanks for having me on. I think you know what you're doing is a great, a great thing. And if you can get a message out to people, that's important. Then more power to you. Um, and you also said that what we're doing now it, it will benefit everybody. And, the, and you're absolutely right. Um, and, and people don't need to understand why it benefits people. So yes, I um, changed my company in a couple of years ago to focus more on functional medicine, functional nutrition, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And come away from you know, the previous few decades where it was more fitness-based and also health-based. Yeah. But the longer it went on, the more I got into, you know, why is it people are suffering with chronic illnesses? Why is it that so many people have the same problems that we see over and over again? You know, a lot of people had lack of energy, poor sleep, bloated, not recovering from the stress of life yeah. and just feeling like they've got something wrong. The other things we're seeing a lot of are things like autoimmune disease where people's bodies are then, you know, breaking down and starting to attack themselves in certain ways. Yeah. Um, almost out of the blue. In other words, they didn't have it before and now they've accumulated it and, and got these problems. And it fascinated me and it made me really, you know, I always love to follow the passion that I have and realistically for the last probably 10 years if not a bit more my passion has been right why is it people are feeling this way and how do we fix them and the main reason behind it is i always wanted to do it for myself so i am 54 years old coming up this year and i experience all the things that people would normally experience right there are days when i'm a bit more tired than i want to be there are days where i might be bloated sometimes although that's few and far between now and I know exactly what happens there are days where I don't want to train or I'm not lifting as much or maybe I can't keep up with the 20 year olds in the CrossFit class or whatever it is right so and I want to make sure that I'm optimized as much as I can and so because I'm so interested in from my benefit and from my perspective that makes me really want to drive and find out more about uh, what we can do for other people and so that's why we are more focused on the functional medicine practitioner room and, and how we can help people. Yeah, interesting. So, I mean, I mean, what you say there is that about feeling bloated and feeling tired, what, what has seems to have become something in society and just progressively, it's almost like that's normal. It's, oh, it's normal that I feel bloated some days or that I feel so tired. I can't, I can't even, you know, get out of bed some days or can't be bothered to go to, to work or whatever it is that someone's doing it becomes a normality. You know, you get women that feel um, bloated, full of water retention all day long, can't sleep. Um, you get guys that basically don't want to have sex with their, their missus. Um, yeah. You know, some of them don't like their missus, but for the, for the yeah. most reason, if you do, you should want to have sex with, you, you know, your, your partner. Um, and again, these aren't normal things. Um, what, what's happening is you're getting, like you're saying, a 
an array of health problems that seem to be consistent always seem to be the similar or same kind of problems and people just don't know what to do about it so they go and take a pill they chase um <clears throat> doctors advice who who for the most part don't really know what to do or you know or treat symptoms as single uh, entities or they might even chase you know if, you, if they're trying to diy it do it themselves they're chasing supplements and it's really difficult because i think for the most part people want to get their health to an almost perfect state or a perfect state, but they don't know where to go. Now you're the first person and I'm in the space and you are the first person. And I'm, and I really mean this or what you do that the, 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 the practitioners that do what you do, should I say, I believe are the first group of people that have a solution to looking at the root cause up via the testing you do, um and through that functional medicine approach um that can actually get people back to a state where they're building their health up over a period of time back to yeah. where it needs to be not over one month over six or 12 months yeah, um, yeah, like we discussed yeah. it's not an easy process but it's also at the same time maybe not such a difficult process if you follow the guidelines um so i think i think i think it's important to understand that it's Firstly, you do have to have somebody almost holding your hand through the process. I agree. I agree. You, you can't be left to your own devices and to Dr. Google because you will just find so much conflicting information. You will not know what to follow. And for me, I liken it to, you know, if, if a builder came around and I wanted an extension built to the house and they said, right, there's your bricks, there's some cement. Off you go, I'll see you in six months. Mm. So where do you even start? I mean, I, I've got no expertise in that business and therefore I would not know what to do. But when it comes to people's health, they honestly believe that they can find this solution to it online, free of charge, because there's so much information out there. Yeah. And I get that there's information there and some of it is good information. I put out a lot of free information. I've got a podcast that's been running eight years. There's 130 odd episodes on it. It's all free. What's your podcast again, Paul? What's your podcast? The Athletic Fitness and Nutrition Podcast. Yeah, check and out. I'll, 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 send, I'll send you a link and you can put it in the show notes so people can yeah. click on it. And, and, there's, an, and, and there's another one called The Paul Burgess Show and you know, I'll send you a link to that as well. But the fact of the matter is when people have got chronic ill health and they've tried everything to try and fix it, the need to start stepping outside the, the box and going, okay, what else don't I know? Because here's the biggest problem. People will always try and solve their problems with the information that they have. Okay. So really important to understand that from your experience, that's the information you have. And that is the only way you can try and solve your problem. If you can't do it from the information you have, then you have to find new information somewhere. And the downside to that is you do not know what you don't know. It's, and it's a difficult concept to grab, but it's really important, right? So I don't know how to build a wall. I know cement goes in between the bricks, but I don't know anything else about it. Yeah. But a bricklayer will go, well, you need to do this and that and the other and the other and the other. See all that other stuff he's just mentioned? I don't even know it exists. Yeah. I don't even know how that works, right? So I don't know what I don't know. So there's no way I'm gonna do it myself by tapping into Google and, and asking someone uh, down the social club or whatever else it is. You need expert advice from people yeah. and that costs money. And I'm, you know, I'm the same as everybody else. We charge money, but we get huge results from it. And the people that we treat are now coming out of literally lifelong chronic illnesses and feeling the best they've felt for ages. We've got a, 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 someone in common, um, a, a lady that you train who had a thyroid issue and yeah. had it for a long time. And I sat down with her and we basically put a few things in place for her. And the next time she went to her uh, endocrinologist to check her thyroid function, they were almost like, well, I don't understand what's happened. Yeah. How, how have you changed this so quickly without, yeah, she, she without, yeah. no, but without the surgery that they were insistent she had? 
mm. right? We need to cut this out. We need to give you this radiotherapy and all the rest of it. And we said, no, 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 let's try a different way. And we've got the letters that said, you know, fine. I mean, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I mean, even if, even if you... I, I love your analogy about the wall because that speaks volumes to, to anyone. It's really simple. And even if you did decide to build that wall and manage to build it yourself, that wall is going to fall down at some point. And that's what's going to happen when you try and DIY your health. Um, you might feel better for a short period of time, but you're just moving over cracks via yeah. symptoms or whatever. Now, I, I know and you know that functional, a functional approach to health works for anyone, whether you're an 80-year-old nan, a 40-year-old mum, a 40-year-old businessman, or a 20-year-old athletics expiring athletics coach or crossfitter or something, whatever it is, sportsman. Now, we understand that approach works, but most people, the masses don't yet. So what is functional, what is a, a, functional, a functional approach to health? What is that? Okay. How do we explain that? Right, so well, there's two things I want to explain. One is the, the kind of the definition or, or a layman's version of the definition. So when you look at, when you go to an uh, allopathic or a normal doctor, GP, you'll go in there and go, look, I've got this illness, this cough, this symptom, whatever it is. And they'll say, okay, here's a, a remedy for the symptom. So maybe here's an antibiotic because you've got a bacterial infection or, or here is something to stop the bloating or you're constipated, here's something to get your bowels moving. Yeah. What we do is we look at the symptoms and we don't treat that symptom. We look at, okay, what's causing that in the first place? And then we look a lot deeper and say, okay, now we've found what's causing that. We've also found one, two, three, four other things that are going on that are all contributing to this main symptom that you have. But also the fact that you're constipated, you've also got hair falling out or you've got lethargy or you have a poor thyroid or whatever it is. So we need to work out what is causing those problems as well. Yeah. It's very rare you just have one thing and you just deal one thing. You deal with everything and you do it in a particular way. You cannot fix this stuff in two weeks. Right? It is not doable. It's not a two week course of pills that you turn around and go, okay, I'll take those and I'll be fine. Let me give you a really good example, right? If anyone has ever suffered from thrush or candida or a yeast infection and they go to the chemist or their doctor, they will give them um, the brand name is Caniston and it's an antifungal, anti yeast cream and and um, uh, uh, an oral tablet that they take. Um, and that's great. It gets rid of the, the candida, it gets rid of the yeast or the, the thrush almost overnight. It stops the itching. You take it for a week and it kills what's there. Mm. That's all very lovely. The problem with that is I can guarantee you that the majority of people do, that do that get reoccurring yeast infections yeah. and they can't work out why. And the reason is when you kill a yeast, so you know, understand this, yeast, mold, fungus, that stuff's been around a lot longer than humans have. Yeah. It will be around a lot longer than we are going to be. Once we've all gone, that stuff will still be knocking around. It's yeah, very, as a race, you mean, once of the race is, a human race has left, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Once we've killed ourselves, because yeah. we're on the way to doing that now, the, the way things are going, once we've destroyed our lives, yeast and mold and fungus will still grow. So it doesn't want to leave. So when you attack it with fluconazole, which is the, the, the oral supplement that you take with canister, yeah. as soon as that yeast feels it's going to uh, be attacked and die, it explodes and it sends out spores sorry, of yeast. Now that is not a full grown active yeast yet. It's just a spore that will grow. It's like a seed that gets, fired out throughout the body or throughout wherever the local is. So if it's in your gut, wherever it is, and it's dormant for about two or three months. And in about three months time, it starts to grow again to a size that it becomes active and you get this reoccurring yeast infection again. 
And so they go, oh, I've got to go back to the doctor. I've got this yeast infection again. What a nightmare. Yeah. So they go back to the doctor. Same thing applies. They get rid of it for a, over a couple of weeks. Three months down the line, same thing happens. And it's so what we do, Yeah, very common. Right? So that what we do is we go, look, we don't treat it like that because that doesn't work. Yeah. We treat it over a three-month period using a specific set of nutraceuticals or supplements or whatever else it is, no medication. And we, we attack not only the yeast, but also the spores as well to make sure it doesn't come back. Okay. Now, what you're doing there is you're not just getting rid of a yeast infection, you're improving your systemic health and your gut health because yeast or candida or whatever you want to call it uses what's called NAD, which is part of your energy pathway for its own energy. So if you've got a systemic infection of yeast, and you'll see this as thrush or athlete's foot or itchy skin or things like that, if you've got that over years, all that's happening is not only is it uncomfortable, but it's draining you of energy because it's stealing your NAD from your energy pathways. So no wonder you're tired. But I'm tired all the time, and then we have the problem that I can't sleep. Yeah. So well, if I'm tired, why can't I get to bed? Now that's another whole kettle of fish that we can start talking about. We're not going to because that would be here for hours. Yeah. But all of this stuff needs to be looked at in its entirety. You can't just turn around and go, like, I'm going to just try to treat the symptom. It has to be from the bottom up. So what we do is we do a comprehensive blood test along with a very comprehensive questionnaire. Yeah, let, let's talk about that. Sorry, let me, yeah. sorry to butt in there. So somebody comes to you and they're wrecked, whatever yeah. it might be, whether it's Hashimoto's, a candida, parasite infection, um, chronic tiredness, anxiety, depression are two big ones as well that normally yeah. have the other underlying causes. Um, so someone is finally put in touch with you. They pick up the phone, they email you, what happens? Where do we start? Because these people just don't know what, what to do. Where do you start from there? So, so you, yes, you do get people with those symptoms. But I'll tell you what, we also get a lot of people that will contact me. And in, in the, the initial con the conversation is, I just want to see what's going on. I just want a bit of a checkup. Mm. And when you have more of a conversation with them, so people, I will normally have a conversation on the phone for about 15 minutes or half an hour to understand what their issue is and what their real uh, problems are or, or, or understand the symptoms of their problems. And once I know that, I can then decide what is the best way to go forward. But generally, they'll turn around and say, I just want to see where I'm at because I just, and here's the thing, right? I just feel as though something's not right. Yeah. Or I just don't feel the way I should feel. And immediately that happens we know there's some underlying things going on because you are your best nutritionist you're your best doctor you're your best therapist because you know yourself better than anybody else so if you know there's something not right then i'll just ask tell me about why you think that what are the symptoms of it what's not right blah blah, blah. and it could be any of the things that you've mentioned and then a, you know a whole plethora of other things and once i know what the situation is we'll then probably instruct a blood test so we'll get someone Your to come test is very in depth, extremely uh, in depth. I, I've had a blood test yeah. for you yeah. and I've seen several others and used some for my clients as well. Cause you know, I'm doing some training under yeah. you and, and the blood tests are hugely comprehensive. You, you wouldn't be able to get that level of blood test anywhere else. I don't think so. Not, yeah, not, you? not for your doctor or, or NH yeah. local hospital anyway, not through there. No, well, well, here's the thing. Right? So we'll do a blood test. The blood test we do, are that, that if you ever had a normal blood test at a doctor's or even a private blood test, what you'll get back is a sheet of paper with the, the numbers. So you have the marker, the number it was, and whether it was high or low, or if it was normal. And that's it. So you'll have a load of markers and an H if it's too high next to it, or an L if it's too low. And then you've got no information. All you've got is, Right, well, my, I know, my creatine kinase was too high or my outfos was too low or whatever it is, right? So what does that mean? Well, you can't take a single marker on its own and make a 
diagnosis as to what that means. It doesn't work like that. So if people say, oh, my vitamin C is low, go, well, that's fine, but why is it low? And what other things have we got? So maybe that your adrenals are stressed. And then we need to look at why that is. So there's a lot of things involved. So anyway, so the blood test that we do normally runs to about 100 pages long in the report, which we, which we put together for the patient. because So it takes a lot of time. And within that report, we look at all of the body systems and how they're being affected by your lifestyle, potentially by your diet, by any potential underlying disease, parasite, you know, whatever else it is. Then once we've got that information in place, you're right, you can't get it on the NHS. You do have to pay for it. And often if you pay for it in a Harley Street hospital or even at a very good clinic, you're talking about thousands of pounds for this blood test. We don't charge anywhere near that. It's like 500, 550 quid. And it's a three and a half thousand pound blood test that you're getting very cheap. It's a lot of money still, 500 pounds. But the information it gives us is priceless. I'll give you an example. Our bloods are that good that we, are, we were able to tell a patient to go and get checked for cancer on a blood test that his doctor would have said that he's perfectly healthy. So let me tell you, let me just repeat that, right? Our blood test uses a functional range. It doesn't use the normal doctor's range. This patient was in the normal doctor's range for his markers. For us, it didn't look good. It was in the normal doctor's range, but we could look at it and say, no, that's not right. I need you to go and get a prostate examination. Yeah. Just for housekeeping, I want you to go and do it. He goes to his doctor. The doctor says to him, there's no need for this examination. You are perfectly healthy. So he says, look, I'm here now. The, blood, the guy's told me to come and have it done. Let me just get it done. So fine, no problem, we'll do it. He does the exam. He says, oh, actually, no, it doesn't feel right. Let's get a scan done. Mm. Anyway, long story short, he gets a scan done. He has two tumours, one benign and one cancerous. Mm. Goes into um, get his treatment. He had stage two cancer which is quite early and he gets his treatment and um you know you need to find out what happens at the end of it does he get cured or not um which we will find out in the next few months time because it's a long process but had we not done the blood test and had we have not diagnosed that the doctors were under the impression he was perfectly perfectly healthy now i'm not bashing doctors okay they are unbelievable people right now we've got a coronavirus issue going on and the doctors are frontline putting their lives at risk so i've got every respect for them yeah well i think with doctors they have it I, they have the best intentions they, they most of the time they have the best intentions i just think it's slightly misguided with the way they're taught and oh, the system right. that they come through and come yeah. out the other end if they were all yeah. guided in a more functional approach and and slightly more open-minded and, and in less fear of getting struck off for their job for thinking outside the box then it would be a different thing altogether you're, you're absolutely right and 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 because of this scenario you know the doctor was reading the blood the way he's supposed to read them he was correct in saying you're perfectly healthy according to his information he's bound, yeah, yeah right? however we managed to catch it at a time and knowing it they would have waited five or six years longer until it had progressed too badly that he couldn't get operated on or that his symptoms were that bad that they needed to say oh actually we better do an investigation. Yeah. That is how valuable our bloods are. You cannot get away from that, okay? I mean, it's 550 pounds to find out if you've got cancer or not early. It's worth every penny, trust okay. me, right? So, so we do the report. Yeah, no, we do the report, we find out everything that's going on, and we get a list of things that we need to focus on, right? So it might be adrenals, it might be some liver problems, it might be some um, parasitic problem, it might be that um, there's some acidity in the body, whatever it is. And then we're able to then design a treatment plan to deal with each and every one of those segments so that we can build on the last bit of work we did. In other words, if the first thing is we need to bring the bloating down, then that's what we'll deal with. Then on top of that, we need to deal with in improving your um, cellular permeability because we're not getting enough nutrients into the cells and not getting enough toxicity out of them, then we'll deal with that. 
If the next thing is we need to support your adrenal function, then we'll do that next. And then we'll do the liver or whatever it is. So, so what you're doing essentially, sorry to butt in there, is you're, you're looking at layers and going at, to the deepest, maybe most important layer first, yep. fixing that. Once that seems to get an improvement or, or is fixed, then you'll move on to the next layer and work on that. Whereas maybe if you went to a doctor and you had um, a thyroid problem, they'll just, they'll go straight for the thyroid with some kind of medication, but not looking at all the underlying causes that are actually finally causing a thyroid issue, which is the last bit of the chain. So you're, with your functional approach, you're, you're going to the deepest level first. Yeah, so here's an interesting thing with thyroid. That's why it takes time. Yeah, um, uh, absolutely, yeah. But it has to take time. Like, you can't fix something overnight. Your body takes weeks, months, years to catch up with your new behavior. Like, you didn't get sick overnight because it's not an acute issue. You know, it's not an infectious disease that you're getting, so you get sick straight away. This is chronic illness that accumulates over time. Yeah. So it takes time for it to get fixed again. But with thyroid, it's interesting because the doctors will test something called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Yeah. And then they'll say, if that's normal within their range, which is very wide, then they'll say, okay, you're fine. But realistically, that's a bit of a misleading uh, marker because TSH is just a signal from the brain to make thyroid hormone. That then makes something called T4, thyroxine. And T4 is responsible for about 10% of your metabolism, very low, doesn't really do a great deal, but it is needed, it's, it's an essential um, hormone. And T4 gets converted to something called T3. And T3 is what's in charge of your metabolism and various other brain functions and things. A doctor will look at your TSH and if it's fine, he'll go, yep, you're no problem. Even if you are on medication they give you, which is T4, what they'll do is they'll measure your TSH and they'll measure your T4, okay? So here's what you need to almost like kind of stick with me here. So you're on medication and this medication is thyroxine. It's T4. You're taking it as, as, as a medication. You go to the doctor. He says, I'm going to check your thyroid. He checks your T4 and he says, your numbers are fine. All he's checking is the pill that you are taking every day because he's just taking the measurement of the pill you've taken yeah right stop taking the pill guess what that number's not going to be there anymore so t4 is fine because we're measuring the amount that you're taking in the pill okay that's gone done nothing for me whatsoever all it's told me is i'm taking the pill yeah what they do not do is check if you're converting the t4 into t3 which is the important thyroid woman so I've had countless, I promise you, countless patients who are taking thyroid medication and are not converting to T3. So they keep going back to the doctor and say, look, I still feel rubbish, I still feel rubbish. He goes, well, your T4 is fine. There's yeah. no problem with it. You know, you, you, you can't be thyroid. We look at their under conversion <laughs> and not converting it to T3. The doctor won't do that because it's too expensive. And then we realize they're under converting and then we need to look at why they're not converting the T4 into T3. And that can be a number of reasons. It might be something really simple, like they need a mineral called selenium. It might be something like they need some iodine. It might be a, a cellular function problem. But whatever it is, we can then treat that and get them to convert that medication to something usable. So it's really important that people understand that kind of thing. There's also, um, there's other things that we get involved with because looking at something just from a symptomatic um, perspective never really helps you need to look at it from a much more underlying so if you'll allow me I want to just share something with you um, I moved house recently and um, I wasn't stressed you know I didn't have a knot in my stomach I wasn't up at night worrying about it I didn't have anxiety over it but there's a lot to do right because you're moving house so I have um, a little bit of technology that I use and it tells me every day whether I'm burning fat or carbohydrate as my primary fuel source. Now this is going to sound a bit like, oh, why is that even important? 
but it just tells you a little bit more about how we look at things from a functional perspective. So you get up in the morning and you use this gadget and it tells you you're burning fat, you're burning carbohydrate. The idea is you should be burning fat in the morning because you've, you've fasted overnight and your body should be switching to a fat burning um, pathway to show that metabolic flexibility. I noticed that the week prior to the move, my bo- every morning I was burning carbohydrate for fuel. Interesting. Even after a 12 or 15 hour fast. <clears throat> and, and I found it very interesting. And digging into it, I realized that what's happening is subconsciously, yeah, I had a lot to do, right? I had to get the removal van in, I had to clean the old apartment, we had to buy some furniture for the new place got deliveries coming for appliances for the new place. We needed to pay deposits and get rent. You know, there's a whole load of stuff to be done. None of which was stressful in the conventional term, but all of which was, a, was what's called an allopathic load. It was a, it was a, uh, it subconsciously, my body was th- trying to deal with it. And that was affecting my metabolism. Now, I, because it's me, I happen to know that I have a genotype called APOE4, and I, and I have one of the genotypes, which means that I have a 25% greater chance of getting Alzheimer's or dementia. And I also have um, another gene variant that says I have a higher risk of diabetes. So dementia and Alzheimer's are highly driven by poor sugar metabolism. So not only have I got a propensity for dementia, I've also got poor carbohydrate metabolism because of my diabetes fascinating. gene. Fascinating. And now I'm looking at my metabolism, I'm going, I'm burning only sugar because of the stress, right? Because of the underlying stress that I'm not even aware of. So that allowed me to say, right, I need to deal with this. And the way I deal with it is now I fast for much longer, hmm. right? For the first week or so, I fasted much longer and I ate no sugar, no carbohydrate, a much more polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fat diet with a small amount of protein. The other thing is because you're able so you're going fast, slightly more fast, a longer fast and slightly more ketogenic. Would, would that be right? Yeah. And, 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 and also the other thing to know is about an APRE4 allele, an APRE4 genotype is that saturated fat is really not good for you. So when you're trying to do a ketogenic diet, and everyone says eat lots of butter and cream, you know, with the saturated fat in it, it won't help harm you eat all the bacon. Actually, it's really harmful for it's, my genome. That health. type of ketogenic diet is not for everybody. No. So, so because I'm aware of that, I'm able to tell go, okay, I'm going to adjust my food slightly. I'm going to push out my fast. And for the first week of being in the new property, it didn't change. I mean, it reduced, but it didn't go back to the fat burning in the morning. And then literally fifth day in, the whole lot went back to where it should be. Mm. And now I get up in the morning, do my measurement, and it's fat or literally a small amount of carbohydrate and mainly fat burning. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, that's all a bit of a complicated story. And I know it's not maybe interesting to a lot of people, but it's an illustration of what can be done with patients when you understand what is available. So if someone I think needs that kind of support, that's what we will put into them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. You say it's complicated and maybe not interesting to someone, but anybody that's listening to this and, and everyone that's listening to this will be into health uh, to some degree. They will have an interest in it because whether you feel okay already or you're on your backside because your health is so bad, there is always a motivation to try and optimize what you've got, whether you're an athlete wanted to optimize your health to perform better, or if you feel atrocious, you're super motivated and you'll do whatever it takes. And money should not be an, an object into getting your health back. Um, I mean, it's relatively expensive what you do. It's not that expensive. It really isn't. Not for what you're giving. And if you have a chronic health... Let me, let me just say, I would get paid more stacking shelves at Tesco. Yeah, well, well, exactly, per person, for sure. So, um, it's not, yeah. You wouldn't get much value, though. Uh, and you'd probably get coronavirus right now as well. But um, it's, if somebody has 
an underlying health issue or a group of underlying health issues, you should be frigging motivated to go and see somebody to get that dealt with. Because if you're not, I'm telling you, there's a serious problem there with your mental state because you have nothing without your health. I don't care how, if you're a motivated businessman or woman or family man, family woman, whatever, you have to be motivated to optimize your health as well as possible. And you're not going to do that trying to DIY it yourself or go to the doctors. Um, so even though you've told a slightly complex story there about yourself, it's still, you simplify it as a practitioner. When somebody comes on board, they don't really, they can, they can know it because you'll teach them, but they realistically don't need to get flooded with that level of right. information. It's just like, please, Paul, please, Louis, whoever, whoever the practitioner is, please make me feel better. What's wrong with me? Why do I feel like this? What do I need to do to get better? And you do that initial blood test, then you're breaking it down in layers, like we said. So it might be done um, by weeks or by months um, where you break certain things down, treat one thing at a time, and then you retest after six months. Is that correct? Yeah. Another blood test? Yeah. yeah. So we want to... So, so, the progress yeah. is pure. Well, you, you have to measure it, right? You have to see where you've got to. So blood test at the beginning, program in place. And for me, I see patients every two weeks and, and it's all online. So I've got patients in 24 countries around the world. So, I can, you know, other than the fact that I've got to manage time uh, zones, which is, can be probably my biggest problem. But other than that, we, we are able to speak to people every two weeks and see how they've been, what changes have happened. And depending on what's gone on in those two weeks, we're then able to re-optimize their program to take advantage of it. So if we think, you know, we say, okay, Louis, I think you need to take this supplement because it's going to give us this result. And you take it and it doesn't do what we said. Because you are an individual, you know, you're not a, a number of, uh, in, a, in, a, in a book that says everyone should take this. We're able to look at it and go, okay, well, that hasn't done what we want. Why is that? And then we can readjust the program because we're seeing you so often because we're always there to help you, you know, support you and to hold your hand through the process instead of someone saying to you, right, here's a diet I want you to follow and take some omega-3, come back in three months, let me know how you got on. Yeah. It does not work like that. Okay. You can't possibly fix people and get them back to optimal health unless you are with them all the time. So we want to make sure that we know what's going on. Your six months is up, 12 months, whatever it is. And we will retest at six months and at 12 months and just see where the, where the improvements are. And even on our reports, it actually shows you where you were previously and what your current numbers are and how much it's improved. Mm. And so it's a really important thing to know that when you're in the program, it's supported 100% and you see measurable results. Yeah. Here's the other thing, right? Everybody, I don't care who you are, whether you're a mum, whether you are a high-flying executive, whether you work in an office, whether you are a personal trainer, whether you are a single 18-year-old, whatever it is, everybody has a hectic schedule. Right? It just we fill our time in life. And when somebody looks at doing a program, sometimes their initial thought is, well, I don't think I'll be able to fit it in. I don't have the time. So the, the, one of the main things that I've discovered over many years is that for it to work, it has to seamlessly integrate with your already hectic schedule, right? So here's another example, and I'm gonna give you an example of me because I'm here. Yeah. My, uh, both my grandmothers died of cancer and my father died of cancer. So it's safe to say there's cancer in the, in the family, right? <clears throat> there's a particular tea you can get, which has a combination of herbs that can help, can't cure, can't prevent, but it can help support your body so that the possibility of cancer is maybe reduced. I don't care if it's reduced by 1%, right? It's a benefit. Absolutely. And it's a really good tea to take. And so as we've been doing this, I've been drinking it because I drink one or two cups a day. That hasn't got in the way of my life. But that's just something I can integrate yeah. into my normal day. 
same thing. When we talk about doing a program for someone, it's going to be something that they can fit into their life without having to spend an hour meditating or, you know, living on a, a mountain in the Himalayas with, with a monk trying to get them. So it's not about that. It's about, I understand you've got a mad, hectic life. So we're going to integrate ourselves into it so that you can still improve yourself. Yeah. There might be some things you're doing which are causing your problems to get worse. And we might want to ask you to just curb that behavior for a while. But generally, we can integrate it into what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's very interesting to, to me, and I know it will be to anybody listening um, that has an interest in their health, which, again, should, should be most people, especially listening to this. Um, and after the period of time where they work with you, whether it's six or 12 months, um, somebody gets like a maintenance plan, like a nutritional maintenance plan, so that they can keep up with their health. Would I be right in saying that? So they're... Yeah, well, well, what actually happens during that time is that they get educated into knowing what works and what doesn't work for them. Yeah. Okay. And we are then in a position where they can go and be, you know, do their own thing because they know what to do. Yeah. And obviously we're always there for them to come back and say, look, this has started happening or I fell off the wagon a bit. Can you have a, you know, can we have another blood test done? And generally we like to do people's bloods every year anyway, even yeah. if they're not on a, an active program just to keep an eye on things. And a lot of people want that because they don't trust themselves. Right? We're the same. If yeah. we're left to our own devices, we know something's not going to go right or the way we want it to. So having that little bit of accountability every year get the blood test done. Let's just see where you're at. Well, do you know what? This is starting to raise its head again. Let's get back on top of it. That allows us to do long-term coaching for people at a very, you know, distance, like, like, you know, distance learning kind of stuff where they can keep themselves on track without having to be involved with us every day. Yeah. The, the important thing is, I mean, initially we got a huge influx of people who are earning an awful lot of money who are, <clears throat> here's a typical patient of ours, and multiple hundreds of thousands of pounds a year, right? Initially this was, it's not the same now. So they were in like 250,000 pounds a year. They were 40 plus years old. They'd spent the last 20 years becoming very successful in their career or building their business at the detriment of their health. Yeah. Late nights, lots of stress, poor food, sex, drugs, rock and roll lifestyle, whatever it is they were doing to get themselves through the, the stress that was coming onto them. And then they were getting to a point where they were realizing something wasn't right and we were fixing them to make sure that they could still perform but live a long, healthy life. Nowadays, we're seeing a lot of normal people, when I say normal, who are earning normal money and have still got chronic issues that we are able to help them with and fix. Yeah. The bottom line is this. People want to be able to take back control of their health. Yeah. Everybody feels as though their health is out of their control and they don't know how to fix it. Yeah. And all I do is make sure that you know how to get back control of it. It's as simple as that. So, so, so I mean, yes, you're holding someone's hand and telling them how to get back to health, but what you're doing is you're giving an education as well along the way. And that is so key because... If you educate one person, one mum, that filters down to all their kids, their Absolutely. parents, their husband, and even their friends, if they're open to listening. And we have, I mean, I know we, we've got a pandemic at the moment with coronavirus, but we've got, we've got a pandemic well before that with, with what's going on with people's health. And people are getting more and more sick than they've ever been. Diabetes is on the rise like you can't imagine, even in the younger populations, obesity, heart disease, cancer. People are dying from diseases, chronic um, autoimmune diseases that they just didn't die from 100 years ago, 200, 300 years ago. And that, as a health coach myself, in my opinion, is a product of the way we're living. We're living so far removed nutritionally to what we should be doing. You know, people are, are drinking fizzy drinks, alcohol, eating sandwiches. Some people are eating in a way they think is healthy. Yeah. Um, where they're eating, you're starting mornings with, you know, granola bars and sandwiches midday and coffees, four or five coffees a day, which is fine for some people, a couple of coffees, but not for everyone. 
um, and then pastas or whatever at night, just this carb fueled cycle of rubbish. You've got the, the vegan movement now, or don't get me started on that, because um, that's something else altogether. Um, but then you've got the highly stressed, lack of sleep crew as well those people are almost indoctrinated into that lifestyle because it's like keeping up with the joneses and it's i've got to work harder i've got to sleep less i've been guilty of that years back thank god i'm not anymore um so that's another thing to add on to it pollution air pollution plastic yeah. pollution it's just such a combination of things compounded on top of enough uh, each other that are uh, just blocking us from understanding and getting back to where we need to be people don't even spend time in nature anymore and with families and in a social setting that's a problem in itself so i mean that's just so, my why everyone's ill <laughs> well i think you're pretty much on the on point with it and there's a couple of other things that i'd like to add to that because i think you're absolutely right um firstly there is a big vegan movement at the moment <clears throat> and people will feel better on a vegan diet if they've been eating a poor diet. Mm. So if you've gone from the standard American diet over to a vegan diet, you're initially going to get a honeymoon period where you feel better because Absolutely. you're cutting so much crap out. Yeah, yeah, totally. But there are some shortfalls to vegan diets and some people thrive on it and some people get not so well on it. But initially you'll feel better. So that's why people are always looking for that quick fix. Yeah. You'll probably lose a bit of weight on it, but you're probably going to, start getting some other issues alongside it. The one thing that we need to get in perspective is the reason people weren't dying of these diseases two, 300 years ago is because they were dying of infectious disease. Mm. Thyroid, uh, um, typhoid, I was gonna say thyroid then. Typhoid, smallpox, um, dis, uh, um, dysentery, you know, all of the, the acute infectious diseases that yeah. we've now pretty much got rid of. I, and right. then we're normally at a much younger age as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so now we've got rid of those infectious disease. We are seeing so much more of this chronic illness. Yeah, chronic. And, and you're not having it for two or three weeks. You're having it for two or three decades. Yeah. Right? And the reason is you're absolutely right. We've got poor quality food, poor sleep, high stress, all sorts of environmental factors. So things like 5G and Wi-Fi. If I turn my phone on now and looked at how many Wi-Fi signals there are just in where I am, it's probably going to be like half a dozen or more. That's a big problem. I, I cannot turn them off, right? Because they're other people's. And it's everywhere we go. So you've got the, the disturbance of the cellular function via um, Wi-Fi. You've got um, the sleep issues that people have in that they can't get to sleep or they can't stay asleep. You've got environmental toxicity, so the pollution in the air, water, that kind of thing. And then we've got things like social media. Now, people don't get this, and it's really important for them to, to just get a bit of perspective on it. A lot of people have trouble eating grains, right? They, they bloat from it or they find it very irritating to their gut. We've had grains maybe 15,000 years. Mm. And if you soak them in a certain way and cook them in a certain way, you can reduce the effect they have on your body negatively and you could probably get away with them. It took us 15,000 years to get somewhere near adapted to them. We have had Facebook 10 years. Yeah. And the volume of information that is now being thrown at us this environmental insult that's coming into our brain every day our brains cannot cope with it which is why we're having short attention spans right if i if i put a video up for 45 minutes explaining it like this episode yeah say it runs for 45 minutes an hour and that goes on someone's feed they're gonna look at it and go no way i'm not gonna watch that okay so let me half it and do it in half an hour still the same yeah you're, you're kidding. I'm not going to look at that. Well, if I can get it in 90 seconds. Oh, yeah, go on. I might have a look at that. And get, maybe, halfway, maybe. And get halfway through it and go, yeah, I'm not really going to. Yeah. So we've got, we've got to understand this, mate, because when you've got short attention spans like that and such an insult of information into your brain, you cannot keep up with it. And so we then start having all sorts of neurotransmitter issues 
but also we have a lot of inferiority issues because we look at other people's lives on Instagram and going, oh, look, it's perfect. And this person's got this and that. Look how well they look and all the rest of it. And it's all a falsehood. None of it's true. Mm. You know, you don't put up your worst photo. You put up the best photo you can after it's filtered and you've taken it. Time. To me, social right? media. So you've got higher rates of suicide, especially in young men. Work that one out, right? Yes, We've got all sorts of depression man. and anxiety. And people are not able to have an attention span for long enough for them to commit to something. So that in itself, along with all of these other environmental factors that we mentioned, the food and the water and the toxicity and everything else, that is putting such an insult onto our bodies that we are no longer resilient enough to deal with normal stress. Because it's more than we can deal with. Yeah. And then we wonder why people are having all these mental health issues. Mental health has been a big, big, big thing in the last three or four years. Yeah. All of a sudden it's gone, everyone's got mental health issues. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Right? There's, there's all of this stuff that people aren't taking into account. So when I look at a patient and we start work together, it's about dealing with all of that and making you more resilient to the modern world. Because yeah. unless you're going to unplug yourself and go and live in a mountain somewhere, and I did an interview with somebody a little while ago who actually lived an hour and a half away from the nearest broadband connection. He had to travel an hour and a half to get on the call. Wow. And he built himself a little house in the middle of Burma in the, literally in the middle of nowhere and um, that's where he lives and he just wants to unplug from the world yeah that's not something everyone can do so we need to support your resilience and make sure that you're you're able to deal with the modern world yeah i, I think you're you're 100 percent right um some some of the points all the points you make there are, uh, are fantastic and another thing that social media has done and i have a real issue with this i have a real issue with the narcissism side and the, the whole fake reality side of things but most people know that's a thing um, in terms of not that the people don't deal with it that well. People that have got mental health issues or inferiority complexes about their own bodies and the yeah. way they perceive themselves. And then they look at people with these fake lives. That is one side of social media. that's a real problem. The other side that's a real problem. And I just want to throw this out there very quickly is snippet culture. It's what it's doing. It's, it's putting a ton of, fitness and health coaches in front of you for 60 seconds and they're throwing out snippets of normally misguided information and because people haven't got the attention spans or the real uh, the real i don't know the real know how to question any information that's being thrown in front of them or just the time they can't be bothered is they're running with bad information like some ridiculousness like Oh, if you can't sleep, go and take 600 milligrams of magnesium a day. That will sort it all out. Okay, it might. Most people do need some magnesium, but what type of magnesium? Does that person need the magnesium? What's all the other issues that are going on underlying that are stopping their sleep? And snippet culture is really causing health coaches like you and like myself to some degree an issue because you're having to re-educate people in that way as well. And that's a real friggin' issue. 100% agree. And, and the other thing is, people are looking for a quick fix. You know, this person says he eats pizza and pasta and cereal and he's, he's got his top off and he's got a six pack and he looked great and says, this is how you need to do it. I do it every day. And, you know, people don't understand you need this in your life. You go, well, for him, that's fine. Yeah. But it's not going to work for 90% of the population because they don't have the same metabolism. Yeah. But they're looking for the quick fix. Oh, I need to buy that certain supplement. Or I need to take that, you know, eat that good bread or whatever it is. And, and you're right, people have that. The only other thing that's really interesting, it's not really to do with health, but it's just an interesting point. We've now got websites like Amazon who directly influence your buying choices, right? And what that means is they tell you what to buy, even though you don't know that. So if you've ever bought anything on Amazon, you know that you will get an email at some point saying, oh, this is recommended to you because you bought this. You go, oh, okay. And you look at it and go, actually, that might be quite useful. I might buy that. And you end up buying something because of an email they sent you. Now, that in itself is pretty innocuous. You go, okay, they're a commercial business and they've got to make some money. And 
if you didn't want the product, you wouldn't have bought it. So what's the big deal? But what happens then is they are starting to influence your psychology and your philosophy on what's important because when you purchase something, it affects your perspective on what's important. Mm. I don't need a guitar lesson or a whatever, but if I end up buying one, it means that all of a sudden that's become important to me, which it was never done before. And that's directly because of the influence they have on us and they have all the data. Right, so they can re they are very powerful in that respect. Not just them, there are other companies that do it. But what I'm saying is the majority of the world aren't even aware of that. Mm. And it's being forced upon them in a way that they're not able to make a decision about. And that can influence someone's life philosophy for years to come. Yeah. I think it's quite important to just be aware of because you know, people don't want to be manipulated in that way. Yeah, we we're getting it off influencers themselves as well i mean i'm gonna throw a name out there i can do it. it's my show i don't care uh, but i love what he does and i love his work ethic and we've spoken about him before personally you know offline is gary v he's like i love what he does i as i said i love his work ethic but the dude's killing people man he's telling people to to grind themselves into the floor so he stop doing that and it's it, though that type of thing is killing people it's making them sick and it's yeah. making them also, I don't think he realises he's doing it, but it's making people feel inferior if they can't put that, that level of work into their lives, which most people can't. Can't sleep three hours a night, yeah. seven days a week, and grind, 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 grind. You can't. It's not about you can't. It's about you shouldn't. You know, well, sleep you the most <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. sleep is the most important thing you can do. By the way, I'm sure he's a lovely guy, but he doesn't look that well. He doesn't look well. And, and that kind of thing is also it's wrecking people and it just it just needs to stop and people need to step back and question things a little bit more um i mean look we, we've talked we talked about a ton today and it's been really really interesting and can be a little bit overwhelming for people we're talking about especially in the, the late, later stages of the show here about so many aspects of health and you can't control them i don't believe that in the modern day world we can control them all the pollution the wi-fi around us um it's we can to a degree we can improve on everything that's affecting us um but what you would do with someone and my point here is what you would do with someone is that you will take what we can control as best as possible and get somebody to improve on every single every single part of their health whether it's via nutrition by the water they drink, by the sleep they're getting and improving the quality of sleep and the supplements so that somebody is not only healing from the conditions they had, but going forward, they are more resilient to any exposure that they may get from something that they maybe can't control. If you go for a walk in a polluted city, you're not going to wear a face mask. There's yeah. not much you can do to control that and that will have an effect on your body. But the, your approach and a true health coach's approach will build somebody up to have the resilience to them for their bodies to be able to deal with those factors. Right. And that's what I love. So, um, I mean, that's kind of my final thought on those things. Yeah. I mean, listen, we, we, we help people take back control of their health and make it more resilient to the modern world Yeah. so that they can be as energized as they want to be as productive as they want to be have great relationships with their family and their friends, you know, continue to live a, a long and healthy life. There's no need for people to be sick and dying at, you know, 50, 60, 70 years old. We, we, we can be here well into our hundreds and be well. It's not about surviving, you know, on medication and every day is terrible. It's about being fit and well into your nineties and your hundreds. And that is, that's where we get people. Yeah, that, 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 that's a really good point. I mean, it's not about, you know, somebody living or existing till 90, 100. It's about prospering and feeling great into those yeah. ages. Um, and, you know, people like you, there's not enough of you. There's not enough of us. Um, they're getting, there's becoming more because people are starting to take control and there's more education and availability out there through the online space. But we need to, um, we need to keep throwing that message out there. 
So yeah. where, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, wants to work with you or have a conversation, uh, where can they find you? Uh, best thing to do is go to the website and that's just paulburgess.uk. Burgess double S, right? Yeah. yeah. P-A-U-L-B-U-R-G-E-S-S dot U-K. And uh, you can find me there. There was a contact sheet there. You can have a sift through the, um, the website, see some testimonials from people and all that kind of jazz. Um, but yeah, give us a shout. There's no charge for talking initially and discussing what your issues are and then we can discuss whether or not we want to do some work or maybe I can pass you on to somebody else that's more suited or whatever else it is. Fine. Amazing podcast. Um, people are going to be pumped about this when they listen. Um, I know it's quite long, but these things need to be. Health isn't a short-term fix. Um, I will put your website and any other details in the show notes. And um, we're going to have to jump on and do it again, I think. Yeah, mate. Listen, let me know and uh, we'll talk about some specifics next time and things that people are facing that they want to try and get to the bottom of and um, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I'll, well, I'll get plenty of questions, I'm sure, and we'll, we'll take, some, take some of those and answer people's questions in a bit of a Q&A, I think. Good. No awesome. problem. Buddy, take care. Thanks for today. See you soon. See you, mate.